tonight to play the New York Knicks at 7.30. So 7 o'clock is when that pregame happens. The very last day today, let's say you wanted to dip into CLE Clothing Company to get yourself some game time appropriate gear or maybe some retro buzzer merch, whatever it is. You can use the promo code SPOOKY. Today is the very last day to do it. Tomorrow when November starts, you're going to want to use the word gravy for 20% off. Mike from Parma had a great suggestion, a little late now, but he thought that um, October could have been gravy as well. G-R-A-V-E-Y. Oh. Tying into Halloween, but uh, there it is. So spooky today, gravy tomorrow. And then for the uh, 30 days of November, you can do that. James Harden goes to the Clippers. In the Big middle trade of the night. there, middle of the night. They got four players for James Harden and some draft picks. They're in Philly. Yep, that's good news for him. He's got to be happy about that. You go from Philly to L.A. If you're a professional athlete of any kind, that's the kind of city you want to be in. See and be seen. Yeah, they got a lot for James Harden on the 76ers. And um, he hasn't played yet, I don't think. No. Has he? No, James Harden he, hasn't he played. said he would never play for Philly again after right. this summer. There's they had whole, to deal him to somebody. Yeah, there, there's been a whole thing. Yeah. And they're probably better off without him. Mm -hmm. like he's he just putting bad vibes everywhere in yeah, Philadelphia. He, he, well, wherever he goes, because mm. it, it's never where Nets, Rockets. So, where did he go? So after? he went. So he started with uh, the Thunder. Mm -hmm. Then he got traded to the Rockets. Had a good years there. Won MVP once, I think. Uh, put up great numbers, but never got over the hump of the Western Conference Finals. Mm. Like, he, he... And his performances specifically were subpart in the playoffs. Like, in games that mattered. Elimination games, big game moments, he was missing in action. Then he requests a trade to the Brooklyn Nets. It's supposed to be him and Kevin Kyrie. Durant and Kyrie, and it's supposed to be great. And that never worked. Right. And so then he goes to the Sixers, and it's like, oh, him and Joel Embiid. That should work. Again, completely doesn't show up in the, the playoffs on, on the biggest games. Like, there, he'd have a few good games here and there, but it's never like the elimination Not games. a clutch guy. Yeah. So. Um, is there any concern on the part of any, uh, either team's management, that maybe these issues are due to the fact that his beard is slowly swallowing his entire face? I mean, they haven't brought it up, and I'm right. sure it's on their mind. I mean, this is a guy I would be terrified if I looked like that and was going to a team called the Clippers. <laughs> hey -oh! Because, yeah. see, because his face, hair. So, uh... No, keep going. His face, <laughs> hair, face oh, hair, I, I petered out 30 oh. seconds ago, trust me. At this point, it's, uh, let's stab it to death. Ah, he is ecstatic, of course. He's going to L.A. He should be at Crypto.com Arena. That's aging well. Tonight. For the game. I don't know who they're playing, but who cares? Your Cleveland Cavaliers are here in town tonight to play the Knicks. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio, tell me where you do that. I have new bureau chiefs hitting me up all the time. Patrick listens in Avoca, PA. It's near Scranton. Hey! Speaking of one Dunder Mifflin. Jake listens in Charlotte. Aaron is a listener in Vero Beach, Florida. Uh, Lisa Z is up in Buffalo. Rick is in Nashville. And uh, there's a little talk back button there. You can always leave us messages. I'm listening to Bill talk about how when he's courtside, he's like, oh, I heckle the refs, but it's it's in a way that they like. You know what, Bill? I'll come to your comedy show. I'll heckle you in a way that you'll like, okay? I'll, I'll be a part of the show. I'll enhance it for you. I'll make it better. Ridiculous! Y'all such babies about heckling that comedy, and then any, any other show, go play in a band. Everybody's yelling, screaming, throwing beer bottles at you. <laughs> <laughs> Does that guy think that NBA refs are the same as stand-up comedians? Yeah. Yes, obviously. Oh, okay. And and I obviously see. people are always and and people that are playing in bands love when people throw beer bottles at them. <laughs> right. oh. Well, maybe that guy was in a, a bands back in the day. His voice sounded like he he was in. Uh, Chicken wire bands back in the day. Right. What's courtside cab seats? Like $29? Courtside cab seats? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a little more than that. Oh, 129 <laughs> Five or 600 maybe 1000 2000 $1,000? Yeah, it's a lot. Depends on the game. I love that people think that you're babies because they don't want 
they want to heckle. They want to ruin the show. But also, referees at sporting events expect to get screamed at. Right. And they're not performing, by the way. They're not performing. I mean, they're, they're not, working. They're, they're working. working, but they're not performing. But I mean, that's... Well, some mm. of them are on the payroll, yeah. so you'd think it was a performance. Am mm. I right? Mm-hmm. Sports? You are right. Sports. Have you ever had, like, a, a repeat heckler like that has been to your... Like, been to your shows multiple times. They know your punchlines. So when you're getting ready to say the joke, they're like, and then, you know, they, they say they finish it for you. Have you guys ever experienced that? Yeah, Bill does that every show we're on together. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming out my punchlines from backstage. He sits in the front row and yeah. heckles. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Result of the play will be a first down. First down. Replay first down. You sound like you're yards stupid. From the end of the run. First down. First down. Personal foul. Defense number 58. 15 yards from the end of the run. Result, first down. I, Five yard penalty, still first down. I couldn't, I couldn't heckle this guy. I'd love him first too much. Down. I just, I would want him to talk to me though. Mm-hmm. That's kind of gay. That guy puts salmon, chicken, and fries on his salad. All right, I, I, before we move on, I want to address this guy specifically. You're right. <laughs> There it is. You you, uh, you really figured out the nuances of stand-up comedy and refereeing basketball games, and the uh, and there there was no wink or nod to what I was talking about at all. You did it, bud. Crack the code. Good job. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Giving this guy his props for yeah. cracking the code. Exclusive deals hey, Alan. Mary. I'm sorry? Bill seems annoyed. Oh, I can't see him. Does he look annoyed? He's, he feels annoyed. Mm. Well, it, it's an annoying person. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say was gay, Cody? He wanted the guy to talk to him. I'm like, what? You want him to like pillow talk you? You just want to No, I just want to hear him talk. I, I don't want to talk. I, I want to listen to him talk because of the accent. I was going to say. I was, First time. First time. Yeah, it gets me hard. I've been in a... <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> you know how I know you're gay? How? How do you know I'm gay? Because you macrame yourself. A so he was right. It is gay. Oh, you like you're gay? gay? He nailed it. Yeah. I've been in a few homosexual relationships, and I none of the guys have ever once said, "Let me hear you talk." <laughs> they don't ever want to hear me talk. Well, that's why you've never been in the right I know. relationship. They're like, oh, talk to me. Mm, that's okay. I I know you're tired. You must be tired. You've done four hours of radio. You're good. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> I wish I had people in my life that did that. You know, I, I know you don't want to talk. I'm going to let you just kind of be quiet and don't worry about it. You just have to sit. Any lines that really work? No. Not that no line? No. Because women are too smart. So they used to do a thing, and I forgot about this show until one of our Pittsburgh listeners reminded me. They used to do a show in Pittsburgh where this morning guy, he was on a a radio station I competed with, and I don't even think he's in the business anymore, but he had a good long run in Pittsburgh. And he would go out to the bars, and he would talk to people, and it was pre-recorded, but they would run a phone. It was like a date. It was called Date Night TV. And they would run into girls who were like, I'm looking for a guy that's got long hair, and he's nice and tall. Doesn't mind coming out to see me. Oh, it was the best. Date Night TV. I loved it. The lines are cheesy. I'm sorry. What should a guy do if he wants to come up and talk to you? Just be nice. I mean, so you could tell that he wasn't from Pittsburgh. You know, you move around a lot in this business, and so you'll get kind of like regionally neutral. You know, so how you feel? You know, but you talk to the guys in the clubs. You know, I swan girl go home with me on the first date. That's all I want. She don't care. She lets me do the first dine on her. If you know what I mean. (laughs) Wink, wink. I'm trying to go dine on her. You got a little permanies in your panties. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. We dripping like over his egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's your <laughs> I'm harder than a 12-pack sure. Iron City. Uh, well, and there's a new news clip of uh, some... I thought I sent it, but I might not have. Of whom? It was uh, just... Pittsburgh in the news, just the recently a, a yinzer. Oh, I posted over the weekend. It was the I think fourth anniversary of the, the bus, yeah, bus sinkhole. Yeah. Oh. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'll, I'll mail it to you. Is this the SWAT team thing? And um, uh, it's 
some lady talking about her husband. Ladies and gentlemen, Him we going are downtown? experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. You know, he don't like to go downtown, but I, I always tell him, him. I told him that's what I like. Tony, you need a mouthful of me. And he said, what, I can't do like Donnie does it? <laughs> Donnie. Charles, <laughs> get that <laughs> off of it. Come down. Momentarily. Charles. Please stay tuned. Come down. Oh. I told you the first time that uh, my sister and I went to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, she had never been there before. Uh -huh. We went to the casino out there, and she was we like, why do they sound like that? I was like, bro, that's just shortly. what they sound like. It's beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, wait, because it was, um, I think we were off on a Friday or something, so we went out there on a Thursday. And I was like, wait for the night to go on. The more drunk they get, the, the less coherent <laughs> you're going to be. The more you're slurring. These yinzers. Here we go. People live in this neighborhood say there was a man here delivering meals when all of a sudden he saw flames coming out of that window. Then he heard someone was still inside and he ran through the front door. Actually, my husband looked out the window and he said the house across the street was on fire. I didn't believe him because he lies so much. <laughs> didn't we play this last year? Did we? I don't know. I, I think so. Said. I love it because he lies so much. He rolls her eyes. Yeah, we did, but yeah. It's oh, it's great. Just, and her hair and everything is yep. just so Pittsburgh. I love it. Like she's going to lie to you about the house next door being yeah. on fire. Yeah, I so much. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Hmm. Um, there was a, I was reading about uh, people, you know, the housing market is so effed that people are literally cool with believing that they're buying a haunted house. Most people are cool with it, I have to think, because they don't really believe in it. You know, if somebody was like, well, this house is supposedly haunted, nobody who's looking to buy a house, if it was in their price point, they wouldn't care. They go, fine, I don't care if the floor is bubbling and there's blood coming out of the toilet. That's how crazy the housing market is. Difficulty uh, level of trying to buy a house. They said that if all of the other factors fell into place, a huge majority of people say, I would be perfectly fine with buying a haunted house. No, no way, sir. But what if again? Nope. This is this nope. is contingent on. Again, I think a lot of people are cool with it because they don't believe in it. So people go, yeah, fine, I don't care. But what if it was real? What if it was unequivocally real? That's what I mean that a house was haunted. So you go, well, here's my, you know, it's like that kind of hacky bit about people on uh, house hunting shows where they don't make any money, but they have a massive list of needs you know, my must-haves are a giant pool ocean front view that that whole thing you know i make pottery at home but um if it checked all the boxes had a swimming pool if you, whatever was important to you huge backyard ideal location right the school district dynamite what if it was provable that the house was haunted would you these people are saying yes i would buy that house no. No. nope mm -mm. it's not worth it you're going to get messed with. You're not going to be able to sleep. And you might You're going to go crazy. There. You're going to end up killing your kids. Why yeah, you're gonna is kill it? kill your family. But, but why is it? Aren't we? But you could buy a new house and you could still do all that stuff. But too, aren't we, so. con but, but haven't we been convinced because of movies and books and things, right? Why is it always the implication that it's. Um, a house and not you? No, no, no. Oh. That it's angry ghosts. Why is it always assumed people go, when people think haunted house, they space. think of nefarious, uh, angry hauntings? Because that's what the media wants you to believe. Well, that's what I'm saying. Did they we get don't that from show movies? any of the nice ghosts. Well, what about Casper? He has one, and his uncle sucked. No, there's a bunch of sequels. <laughs> and his uncle sucked, but they were still, like, kind of fun. If somebody fun said, haunting. this is the house of your dreams. Now, I must tell you, because, you know, in some states, they have to tell you if someone killed themselves in the house. That's not across the board. I don't know what the thing is with Ohio. But a real estate agent will tell you if they have to. They don't want to tell you anything they don't legally have mm -hmm. to. So they'll tell you if they have to. I, I, now, I must tell you, someone killed themselves in the attic. And a lot of people, again, they wouldn't care about that if they found a house they loved. You're looking for a house. You find your dream house. And they say, now, I must tell you, the house is haunted. However, the last owners of this house, they weren't driven out. In fact, they just found a house they liked more. That could be and a they, lie. they told us that the hauntings were actually quite pleasant. 
it manifested itself in, you know, they didn't see uh, knives, uh, axes in the wall with blood it or anything. They were like, into my kid's cereal. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're like, all of the <laughs> clothes. Helped out were, around the house. They did. They folded the laundry, yes. ran the dishwasher. Yeah. If it's a helpful ghost, like the ghost of a butler, and he's going to do all his butlerly duties. Mm -hmm. Unfinished okay, business. But it's, what if That's it's just unfinished business? It's just, it has to it's clean for all what, what if it's just the idea that there could be a ghost? Because that's what any haunted house is actually. Like someone's going to say, oh, yeah, this place is haunted, but there's no actual proof, really. And you're going to get the house for a discount. You're not buying that? But the thing is. It's your dream home. They also said that 29% of the people that took this survey said they would be more likely to buy a place if it was said to be haunted. Because they figure they got a side hustle there. I was yeah. Getting rooms to walk through and, right. Or even just making content with it. Mm -hmm. There's this, uh, these, this couple I follow on TikTok who live in a haunted house. And they're always showing, like, chairs rocking on their own and doors slamming when no one's home. And it's all, like, ring, ring camera footage and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, because... Is the house haunted and they're just capturing it? How are they setting up these contraptions? Like, people are making a living doing that stuff on social media. But if you were in a state where they had to tell you, and there are a lot of people that are like, I don't believe in ghosts, but I don't know that I want to be in a house where somebody killed themselves. That's me. That's like a weird juju. Yeah, but, is it, but that's because you believe in ghosts. What I'm saying is even if you don't believe in ghosts, it would you might still get like a bad vibe. Like a weird, cool. you'd feel Have weird about it. Have you ever walked uh, into my a My thing place? is, like, what are the odds that it's going to happen again? Is the lightning going to strike twice? <laughs> Have you Did ever, it once. Have you ever walked into a place and been like, I just don't feel right here. Like, this is yeah, very church. uncomfortable. Yeah. Or, like, I get that vibe. Like and, a black nightclub? <laughs> I meant, like. And churches are haunted by the ghost of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I get that vibe a lot of times in hotels. Or like it, uh, like earlier. Yes, because thousands family. of people have spermed all over those but rooms. No, well, That's you just why. Walk in and you're like, I don't know, man. Something about this place isn't right. I don't feel right here. Like you don't ever get those instincts where you're like, I feel like something bad either is going to happen here or it has happened here. Like this is not a good place to be. Not at the Ritz Carlton. No. Always feel Who's awesome at the Ritz Carlton. At the, I am. Alan always is. feel awesome at the Ritz Carlton. Yeah. If I'm at an XL Inn, I go. Yeah, I'm That's getting a I'm weird saying. vibe yeah. off this place. <laughs> This haunted La Quinta. I don't get those premonitions from, like, I get it from people, not from places Spaces. I go. Yeah, like, like I just don't want to be around this person, but it's usually just they're, like, when someone's, like, too eager to meet you. Mm. You know, yeah. Like I've never had that happen, so I'll take your word for it. But, uh... Well, anyway, uh, a lot of people ha would have no problem buying a haunted house if it was proven to them that it, not even proven, probably. They'd be like, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. Where do I sign? I've got uh, what for you? Oh, you want to go see comedian Tim Dillon? If you are a fan, he's coming through to do Playhouse Square. And I will have uh, a couple of tickets for you on the other side of the break. Sorry, MGM Northfield Park is where he's going to be out there in January. $1,000, that is ahead of you as well. 330 is that next keyword.